Okay, and um, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, our first webinar of the day. We have another one uh, at midday. Um, my name is Phil Woods from Professional Beauty Salon International, and uh, we'll be uh, um, looking forward to hearing uh, Raisa Daywood um, talking in a second. Just one or two housekeeping things. We have the chat area. Um, do please use that. Uh, say hello to us. Um, and if you have a question, please use the Q&A um, section. Uh, you'll see the tab at the bottom of your screen. Please use the Q&A uh, because otherwise your question might get lost if we have lots of chat. So um, without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome Raisa. Um, she's an award-winning hairstylist and she'll be discussing how COVID-19 will affect hairdressing post lockdown, what changes must be made and how this will affect revenue since salons may even only allow one client per salon at a time, um, which may not be good. So uh, Reza, do, um, there we go. There's Reza, welcome. Um, Thank Do you. feel free to say hi to Risa in the chat area as well. And if you're watching on Facebook, um, please feel free to enter comments there and we will see those as well um, via our team. So thank you. Over to you, Risa. Hi, guys, and I'm Risa. And today we're going to speak about how post-COVID will affect um, our industry as well as uh, in terms of revenue. And I would like to start off uh, and uh, like speak about this in a way we, we try to keep a positive mind. And that's most important, having a positive mind instead of um, sinking into um, this whole lockdown and getting depressed and it can get quite depressing and uh, it can bring you and hold you down and um, uh, all our goals have stopped for this year and what we've prepared for and um, so positivity and so we can jump into it by saying you know we as hairdressers are going to um, have a new world for us we uh, and we have to adopt these ways positively and uh, besides adopting the safety protocols, we can look forward to re-emerging um, with new concepts. So, and speaking about this, obviously safety is our number one priority and that will be the new luxury for our industry and to make clients feel more comfortable by creating new experiences and journeys in the salon. And by saying this and why I'm saying this is, uh, we have to, uh, adopt ways that are going to um, bring clients in and make them feel as if, you know, they're in a safer place. Being at home during this lockdown has really uh, given people a safe place. So uh, getting them back into our salons has to be that same sort of feeling. Um, you know, in terms of hygiene, we are salons and that's something that we prioritize on having uh, the best hygiene and protocols. But now uh, in terms of uh, implementing uh, uh, the new protocols, which hopefully we'll get soon, um, you know, we have to take extra measures, which um, gives clients, more, like I said, giving clients more that homely feel. So we as hair salons generally, um, use our barbicide, uh, disinfect, uh, clean our brushes and all of that. However, the, the measures that we have to take now are much more drastic than um, what we used to do. And uh, this will include, um, you know, I mean, we, we know that uh, we have to monitor clients' temperatures, we have to sanitize when entry and exit, which we've been seeing over the news and um, going grocery shopping, that they're monitoring your, your, um, the um, social distancing as well. So we're going to have to try and adopt, like I said, whatever the protocols are, but uh, making sure that we're going to talk, uh, uh, make sure that we're going to be consistent with um, what we're doing. So um, our whole journey from entering the salon to leaving the salon is going to be based on uh, 
safety and hygiene so that clients also feel as if they have that security within your space, right? Um, so speaking about uh, safety protocols for clients, we obviously have to look at our staff and um, uh, creating an awareness for them and protocols for them because just as our clients are important, uh, for us as hairdressers as well as the staff, we have to follow the same and even more um, hygiene protocols so that we can emerge into the industry um, being these professional stylists who are creating a secure environment for our clients, right? So by saying this as well and uh, with hygiene and uh, there's a lot of things that will change and um, part of it will uh, be um, limiting contact and uh, creating social distancing in our spaces. But we're going to have to limit clients to walking in with handbags and extra accessories and things that will lay around or be left around and limiting them to come in. And our services, I, I wouldn't say, will be expressed because we're going to have a lot more time doing clients um, uh, individually and uh, so uh, limiting contact with handbags or um, uh, purses, pouches, things like that will be a, a safer place for them and for us. Okay, we will have to create also awareness for clients to come into adhere to the protocols. Um, I think during this time and while we are going through this lockdown, before we can begin and before we can start off, it's a great time for us to structure and and um, you know start putting these protocols into place and also creating awareness, which is also just. Uh, uh, um, creating the awareness will also make our clients understand and see that we're taking this really seriously. Um, what we're going to also have to adopt is a deep cleaning of salons daily and it will be uh, this is will have to be implemented uh, to have a deep cleaning daily so that there's no um, uh, germs or uh, that everything is quite clean and uh, presented each and every day to our clients okay and um, and this also will affect the time taken uh, in a day to serve, service our clients, which we have to um, balance our time in such a way um, because we're going to have to uh, take into consideration the time to disinfect and deep clean salons, which, you know, we had the time to uh, and uh, service many clients on a Saturday, for example, and even during that time, we'd have our time to sanitize, et cetera. But we're going to have to, like I say, take the extra measures, right? Taking, we also have to take into a, a account um, between clients. Say, say you can see clients, or two clients a day. We have to take into account those, the, the time of the service, meaning if a client is coming for a, a touch up or highlights, and then the time that you would, um, disinfect between those clients so you're keeping a safe space for the your next client to come in which affects our industry so much because these days where we booked back to back um eight to ten clients a day which is is going to be a different life a different way but we're going to adopt it like i said positively and have new ideas and ways to um uh, adopt these changes into our industry and like i said in a very positive way because this can be done uh, you can change your whole world in your salon by um adopting new concept and new ways to bring in clients okay um with the regulations in place Seeing less clients obviously means uh, less revenue. And I know it's so difficult for many business owners and um, small businesses as well, because you've invested so much into your salons and by not, I mean, during this time, um, we've really seen a hit and we have to uh, look at ways to bring in clients back. And like I say, with less revenue, it's going to really um, uh, cripple us if we don't manage it properly.
okay? Seeing less clients in your space will bring more peace of mind to them and being consistent with these measures attract more clients to re-emerge into the space. And by saying this, um, you know, uh, we have to be consistent in how we sanitize, how we keep hygiene, how we keep our social distancing. We have to keep spaces so that clients also feel that they they secure in that space. And because we are in a very we 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 in a contact um we in, like we touching we you know we we busy with the hair um so they're already overwhelmed by the fact that you're so close and the thing is that we have to also look at adopting how our body language will be for our clients when they walk in i mean we so in contact hugging our clients we have that relationship where we we so in touch with them but unfortunately we have to adopt personalized ways to welcome, welcome them back in and make them feel that same warm feeling, but just in a more secure uh, way, right? Um, going back, uh, pointing on revenues, salons will no longer see back-to-back -back clients. Like I said, nor will we see walk-in clients. And um, that's going to change drastically because pre-bookings will be a necessity now more than ever. Um, seeing walk-in clients are not going to be... Um, acceptable we, we, we're gonna have to uh, for a very long time not accept any walk-in clients and that's gonna change our revenue as well however if we uh, schedule ourselves with pre-bookings in a certain way and we are consistent with how we do our pre-bookings for our clients we shouldn't go wrong and we should be able to like I said have our clients in and still service them correctly um uh, we've already uh, suffered losses during the lockdown period, period and this decreases um, the business revenue immensely uh, and uh, obviously getting our staff in making sure that we, we also have to have not, uh, I mean, when regulations come out, I'm sure not everybody will be able to get back to work. Uh, you won't have as many assistants as you had. You won't be able to um, have many apprentices as well. So we have to also look at ways where we're going to have to manage ourselves in a certain way and our staff and uh, our revenue. Like I said, we, we, are, we, we have suffered the loss but looking forward we actually have to look positive because we are quite high in demand and when we do go back people are going to look for the professional touch we are our clients are still um and i i've seen this through social media and interaction on social media and uh yes uh, everyone's going through with color kits and um uh asking for advice on how to do their colors etc but we need to um, also understand that being a professional is also knowing your value and going back into the industry after this lockdown, we need to think positively because trust me, people want that, uh, people want that professional advice, a professional touch on, on the, um, uh, for, for them to have uh, coming back because I also feel not everybody likes to just sit at home and do their own color and not every time it comes out correct and we're going to have a lot of color corrections going back into uh, uh, salons because I do know of many clients who've uh, resorted to using a box color. Uh, we are an industry where we build people's um, positive for themselves, their image, and uh, of course, being at home and during this time has already dampened so many spirits. However, they've maintained the um, colors in a certain way. And of course, things didn't go right, you know. So we're still in a position where clients are going to come back to us and say, hey, you know what, I made a mistake. Please, you're going to assist me and help me out. How can we get my hair back in order? And this is also going to have a huge impact on time. Like I said, we're going to have to also work on the time that we can um, service our clients and, and, and fix those colors or do a, a new color and also implement or um, recommend um, different um, colors and uh, things that would be more maintainable for the time that we're in, okay? And um, so with, with regard to... Um, revenue prices for all services and products are marginally going to have to increase to uh, supplicate for the new measures being introduced into each and every salon. And by saying this, I, I mean marginally increase is because we are not going to see as many clients to um, 
to have the turnovers that we had. However, with regard to our whole hygiene and all the protocols and all of that that goes within our um, journey of the salon, uh, we are going to have to obviously invest more uh, of our capital to ensure that these things are consistent and making sure that's also consistent. Our services are not going to be uh, we're going to service maybe two clients a day. So um, in terms of the marginal increasing in the revenue, we, we, we have to look at ways where we're going to have to do services and increase our um, menus for uh, so that it is uh, also profitable for us to run our businesses. It wouldn't be... Um, it wouldn't actually work out for us to do two clients and then we suffering losses in, 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 the, in, in the salon because we are unable to make our rentals, we are unable to follow our hygiene protocols, we are unable to get any stock and all of these things add up uh, and uh, I'm sure there's many salon owners that are um, participating uh, in this webinar and we know the costs that incur um, with uh, running a salon. So we need to also understand that, uh, which clients would understand that we have to increase certain services in terms of pricing so that we can still be sustainable as salons. And um, in a respectful way, and by saying this, it's, it, we don't have to go through to a drastic in increase, but we can look at ways where we need to have a bit of added value right we've had a lot of time to think during this time and in this period on how we are going to improve our service and extend our menu and um we're going to how we're going to improve our services as well and be more hands-on and create a more personalized experience no pun intended on the hands-on uh, phrase but we um we really need to look at ways where we are going to um personalize this experience for client and make each service um, something much more wholesome for the client because you're going to service two clients in that day. You need to make sure that each and every part of that service has an added value to it and as well as making the client feel comfortable in that space, making client also a client feel as if she is getting the experience that she needs to be in a hair salon. Clients' appointments will have to be monitored and done in a way that timing for sanitizing and preparation for the next client is done thoroughly. And this means that, you know, between the two clients, say we, say we do two clients a day, between those two clients, managing that time is going to be very important so that you don't have a clash that the client walks in, now she has to wait and there's uh, any contact with two clients in the salon, we're going to have to keep that social distancing. So that time in between making sure and what would be a great idea for us getting back into salon is having extra equipment so that when we use a set of equipment that can go through a sanitizing station and then have your next set of equipment which is sanitized already which will, which will lessen the time for us to um, start on the next client and we have been um, exposed to more virtual consultations and virtual advices from um, and I find that many hairdressers have been doing virtual uh, consultations which is a really nice thing because you can also do your virtual consultation a day before the client comes in and when the client comes in, you already have an idea of what it is that she wants, what uh, services you're going to do, what her hair looks like, and manage your time that way. And by doing your virtual consultation, you are also getting the information in terms of her health, et cetera, which you, you should do when clients walk in. We're going to have to implement questionnaires to monitor clients' health, uh, as well as um, how they're feeling for that day. And of course, if you're doing virtual consultations a day before, you kind of also have an idea if a client had a flu or you should, you know, you, you need to ask these questions now. And it's it's not, it's going to be an open question to ask. Um, have you been in contact with anybody who's uh, been uh, or had uh, the, um, uh, the corona or have um, you been in contact with anybody or families that had it? So you need to ask these questions for the safety of yourself as well as your clients because we're going to be responsible to make sure that our environment and our clients are safe because from you 
this could pass on and that's not where we need to we need to think positively that you know what we're going to enter this new space we're going to uh, we're going to be consistent in our protocols we're going to make sure that our clients feel safe and secure and we're going to make sure 100 percent that we're going forward with this in a very very um it's uh, we, we're going to take our, our measures extra and that we're going to make sure that our clients feel safe and that we are 100 percent of this so the virtual consultations do assist and help in many ways um and also it takes off a lot of time because uh, coming from a professional salon our consultations are the biggest part because that's extracting information from the client on what they want the service they want what's the current uh, look as well as their desired look so it does take a lot of time and if you are going to be uh, do with us um a day before and extract that information at least on the day you're prepared and uh, you can go ahead with the service and uh, do that service um, uh, uh, with the best of your abilities and um, part of um, strategizing this um, uh, the going into salons post COVID is also your marketing and social media strategies and this is going to have to include a lot of um, uh, we're going to have to try and make, um, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to have to try and make an awareness more on um, hygiene and safety in our salons and try to promote that because we're going to have to get clients to feel and think that they are coming to a safe, a safe space. Um, yes, we are, our social medias and our marketing is all about hair and the beauty of hair and all of that, but um, we need to create a platform for us to promote uh, hygiene um, and safety awareness, right? This is also a good time to think about redefining your space by creating spaces for clients to ease their fears and also to create calm. We have to look at salons giving a space of calm and also the space of, you know, I think clients are so afraid to come back uh, even though they're dying to get their hair done, they really want their hair done, but we have to create the space of calm. We have to create the space of uh, making clients less feel that they less fearful to come into the salon and make sure that we feel as if, you know, they know that we're going to give them 100% of our, um, our service with the top of the range uh, hygiene and safety protocols with regard to retail products and this was also something to think about and um, reading through uh, articles in uh, the industry and how things are going to change our retails change drastically and um, it's amazing how companies have offered um, shipping which is uh, the new way to go uh, and virtual consulting your client before recommending a product which lessens contact with um, your client or the product or the, uh, you know, uh, gone are the days when we had to um, display tons of product on a, on a shelf. It's gone. We cannot look at that anymore because by doing that, you have a lot of interaction with your client and then your client touching the bottle, you touching it, you recommending the product. What we're going to try or we're going to have to implement is um shipping which shipping is going to um that's already implemented i mean but us to get more compatible with shipping products to our clients or we're going to have to display display just the product one product and uh get our clients to maybe come through to your retail shop that only has um uh, each product range uh, one in each so you for example, let's say L'Oreal Professional has the CD Expert range, you'll have just one product of shampoo, conditioner and mask. And this you can explain to your client and you can dispatch it from your stockroom, which is obviously sanitized and uh, obviously in a, a, a safe space to hand it over. And by doing this, you're going to have to dispatch obviously on payment when the client leaves and you can sanitize in, in, in those ways. So I've, I think I've touched on most of what I think like and how I 
from my personal perspective as well as my information that I've extracted from the industry to get you guys to understand that our world is going to change but in a very positive way we're going to have to think positively how to change our space and it's a, such a beautiful time to reinvent your brand, your space, and who you are as a hairstylist and how you're going to service your client in the best possible way in terms of safety and hygiene. Sorry, Phil, I, I, I can't. Can All right. <laughs> I, I was about to speak and then I realized I was muted still. Right. Um, thank you for that, Risa. Um, I think for me, uh, you know, yes, you, you've covered a lot about the protocols that we're going to have to do and clients, you know, the management of clients so much more, you know, uh, but it, it's also, I think people have got to think about how they're going to reassure clients as well that um, before they actually even make an appointment, perhaps, I don't know. Um, in Dubai, um, we've obviously got an office in Dubai and one of the things that they, um, they're, they're now able to do treatments and, um, you know, uh, hairstyling and etc. And um, they've been doing a lot in the way of uh, talking to the client beforehand, yeah. uh, before they the the appointment to to a reassure them, to make sure that they know what to expect when they turn up at the salon. I mean, things like even having the door closed or not you know, to the salon so that the client doesn't actually have to touch the door handle. Um, you know, it's little things like that. Obviously, that depends on the location over here because of safety, some salons, you know, obviously want the gate, <laughs> the barricade up. Um, so it's, there's a helicopter flying overhead. I don't, sorry for the interruption. Um, cheers. Um, it's not my helicopter, honestly. <laughs> um, so, so um, yeah, it, it is all going to be a lot, lot different. Um, and I mean, one of the things we we've done in the UK is we put together a, a poster for the the salons to display, um, sort of saying what is expected of the client and what the client can expect of the salon. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably hopefully do the same, and we'll, which will make freely available to everybody over here as well, as soon as we know what actually the protocol is going to be. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think for me, it's it's positive that sounds are thinking about what they're needing to do. And also that we might possibly have some good news in the next few days, maybe, with luck, um, as to when we can open. Yes, um, I think it's it's important how to say, and like I said, um, in terms of social media and in terms of marketing as well as virtual consultations, is to make an awareness to our clients to make sure that they understand what it is like to get back into the salon and to follow through with what protocols that we 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 have to follow. So I think um, that's it. and we and we have the platforms. That's amazing. I mean. Uh, we have so many platforms in our industry and uh, also our, our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We've got all the platforms to um, voice and to create the awareness, which is really nice and also create such an easy way for us to communicate with our clients to make them aware. I mean, also our appointment bookings through our uh, the applications that we are registered with and um, sending out messages or um, sending out uh, an email. And we're going to have to try and get back into... Um, uh, emailing clients and uh, sending out texts to create awarenesses, which is really nice. And the more we do that as hairstylists, clients also believe that we understand as well as uh, they trust us more, that we are trying our best to follow through with protocols. And if we are not going to do these things, it's really going to affect our uh, affect us as a hairstylist in our businesses. So uh, investing in the new protocols or the way we're going to have to do things or investing in the safety and hygiene is going to be a tremendous um, investment as well. So, uh, mm. but rather doing that than not having your salon at all or having clients come to you and not feel safe. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, we've got a couple of questions um, from people. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Somebody has asked, do you know what the actual protocols are for us to open? Mm. Nope. <laughs> uh, 
Um, we don't, we don't see everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, obviously, there there are some obvious ones, such as the social distancing and those things. Um, and uh, the OACB have created a video where they detail quite a lot of um, what we presume would be uh, required. But unfortunately, uh, we don't know exactly. Uh, the other question we've got is um, hair services. This is from Joanna. Hair services are already so personalized. How can we personalize these treatments even more? So we don't, ah, okay. Look, so, I mean, if you're going to, and when I say, uh, you know, we might not be able to do every service on our menu, uh, depending on what the protocols are, we're going to have to try and maintain, okay, so we are doing, for example, your clients coming, you also have to see, okay, uh, your clients can for root touch up and personalizing her treatment by doing her root touch up would mean maybe uh, giving her a, a complimentary uh, hand massage so that she can feel as if, you know, uh, obviously following through with your disinfecting, etc. But personalizing it in such a way that everything around her starts make, putting a lot more focus on her feeling important and safe at the time. So whatever services that you're going to do, um, you have to kind of innovate uh, a certain journey around that for your client, or uh, even if she's coming through for, uh, just coming through for a cut and blow dry, um, you can offer a, um, a complimentary uh, treatment with that. But like I'm saying to you, that's why we're going to, have, going to have to look at increasing certain prices of, of your services to give that added extra value, as well as um, you, uh, the, including your hygiene uh, into that. And like I'm saying to you, I mean, you're going to have to think about this innovatively, um, having to make sure that when your client comes in, whatever she does, she's going to have the extra uh, value, extra personalization, uh, giving her, um, maybe having a poster out or a really nice note given to her uh, um, via an email or uh, when she comes in, uh, you know, uh, everything around. I actually seen on social media that uh, some salons have had um, a little song they sing. And personally for the client to welcome them back into the salon and, you know, trying to create that journey. And like I said, with, with you as a salon owner and you know your space, you know what services you offer and what added value can you add on to that? What will your space also allow? Uh, not many salons are, 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 are maybe 10 seater salons or not many salons have the luxury of having two clients in if, I mean, like I said, we don't know yet any protocols, but you know, imagine just being one client in the salon. It's, it's, such an, it's also such a personalized thing where one client is in there and you are going to, you can't leave an empty feel for her. You're going to have to create something that's going to make her feel whole and warm and uh, your interaction with her has to be in such a way, like I said, your body language, your language is going to have to be in no contact whatsoever. However, we can make certain personalized um, uh uh, personalized poster or personalized card for your client to have a look at so she can feel like you know she's coming in and she feels like you know she's getting her added value yeah cool okay um thank you for that i doesn't look like we've got any other questions at this time um i don't know if anybody wants to say anything on the chat whether they found it beneficial, useful, et cetera. But um, I certainly found it very uh, enlightening. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to maybe uh, talk to you again. And obviously we look forward to hopefully having the industry open again. And so you won't have the time to talk to us. Um, but uh, there we go. So thank you very much, Raisa. See you soon. Thank you. Awesome.
thank you so much. And it was lovely um, getting the stand chat on this panel. And um, just the last few, um, um, a last few motivational words, I hope. Um, we are hairstylists and we change uh, clients' images to make them feel amazing. And it gives us a sort of good energy. And if we don't go back into the industry with, with positivity and good energy, we, will, we won't be able to pass that energy on. And um, we don't have, uh, there's no longer that uh, personal touch in terms of touching and holding and hugging. However, if we can give off good energy in our industry, as well as us as a team of hairstylists, we are family on our own and just assisting each other. You guys are most welcome to anytime ask me any questions or go on my Instagram page and we can always assist each other and look for ways where we as a, as a family, we are family that's going through this together. And for us, to just keep into uh, contact and um, you know give each other help and ideas for our salons it would be really uh, such a pleasure to assist all of you guys but think positive and let's go for this in a very positive way because we do change lives in our own way great stuff thank you pleasure okay. awesome bye guys thank you, you. bye bye bye